We're at the Nig Bay Nature Reserve, which is in the Cromarty Firth in the far north of Scotland. Um, it's a really big area of mud flats and salt marsh, and it's really important for wintering water birds. So behind us at the moment, you can hear some oyster catchers, and you can there's some Bartel Godwits, Knot, Dunlin, Redshanks. shell duck, widgeon, all sorts of things that come here to spend the winter. We're quite close to high tide so the, the um, mud flats that the birds feed on have been covered by water so they're all sort of congregating on the salt marsh to roost, so to rest whilst their food is covered up and they're often, you know, sort of this, this sort of constant jostling for position on the roost, you know, where's the warmest spot, where can I see for predators? And, uh, you know, so there's this sort of constant chit chat between them, uh, between species, between individuals, and yeah, just a lot of movement going on. It's, just, it's a really great time to just come and watch birds and just watch their behavior and watch how they interact with each other. So we've got a lot of, um, it's a little, snail called hydrobia or a mud snail that's a really good food for shell duck and so we get loads of them here as well they just nibble around all the way and then bob around on the sea at high tide know that tides come in and out twice a day and when they go out they expose this really big area of mud which is absolutely packed full of little beasties of invertebrates and it's those beasts those little invertebrates marine worms and shells and snails and things that loads of wading birds and ducks and geese come from places much colder than this to come and spend the winter and to feed up the birds that come here they breed in places much colder so they breed in uh, the north of Norway, in Sweden, Finland, Russia, or some of them come from Greenland and from the Canadian Arctic. And obviously those places get super cold in the winter, so they're completely frozen over. They can't spend the winter on their breeding grounds. So they, need, they come south. They come south for their summer holidays, for their winter break. They need lots of calories to survive the winter and they also need to be in good condition for the next breeding season so that they can undertake these long migrations. You know, it's a long way from Scotland to Greenland or back to Russia to breed. So they need to be fit and healthy to do that. So by the time it gets to sort of February, March time, these birds are leaving us and they're going back to their breeding grounds. It's really important for um, birds that winter on estuaries that they have safe places to go when their food source is covered up. Places like the RSPB Reserve at Nig has a, a big amount of salt marsh directly adjacent to the mudflats. So the birds don't waste energy sort of flying around trying to find somewhere safe. They can all bundle up together, they can keep warm, they can take it in turns to look out for predators, things like that, so it keeps them safe. And then they can just wait out until the tide goes back out and they can get feeding again. Nig Bay is really a winter reserve. So we have about a thousand hectares here. We manage maybe about 25 hectares for, for lapwings uh, for in the breeding season. But the rest of it really is all about making sure that there's a safe and secure place for these birds to come in the winter. And the Murray Firth area, the Cromarty Firth and the, and the Dornoff Firth and the Murray, the Murray Firth in general, it's the northernmost estuary complex in the UK. So it's the most northerly place that all these birds can come. And we need to make sure that it's kept safe and secure and pollution free, that there's you know, sort of no disturbance so that these birds can come and feed and they can come and roost safely and be super fit and healthy to go off and breed next year.